Hey, so if you're watching this video, you're probably in the market for a new recording interface, maybe even the Apogee Element 46. We're gonna take a couple minutes, we'll talk about the Element 46, what I thought about it, and we'll also review how easy it was to set this thing up and get started out of the box. Stay tuned. So to begin, I ended up picking up this Apogee Element 46 directly from Apogee's website. They offered a refurbished, repurposed model that was 100 bucks less than what I was able to find it for on another website. Via Apogee, you were able to get it for $7.99 on Musician's Friend and Musicians123.com. It was going for $8.99. And honestly, out of the box, it's mint, no scuffs, no scratches. So not a bad deal if you're looking to save a little bit of money and it comes with a full one-year manufacturer's warranty. A real quick backstory on what I was using before the Apogee, I had an M-Audio M-Box Mini, which I really liked. I had it for probably three or four years, maybe even a little bit longer. So the first thing I love about the Apogee is the size. It's not too big, it's not too small, it's about yay big. I'm actually able to sit my monitor on top of the Apogee. So it's a great footprint for those of you who are looking to piece together a bedroom studio and you don't have rack space, you don't have a lot of room to spare. The setup is super easy. You have a power cable and then go out. Unfortunately, it doesn't come with a Thunderbolt cable, so you do have to buy your own. A Thunderbolt cable is gonna probably run you around 30 to $40, depending on length. Plug and play, set that up, ready to go. Here is my biggest disappointment with the whole process, was downloading the driver so I could use it with my Mac. You do this straight through Apogee's website, and they make it pretty easy to find the, the link to request the software. So you email them, you say, hey, I have this X, Y, and Z Apogee model. Here's my email, and they say, cool, expect an email. I believe their website says within the next 15 minutes. I waited two or three hours, got zero emails, so I actually had to chat with their tech support, which they were able to get it to me in two minutes, which is great. Uh, fun fact, I got the email the next day, 24 hours later. So that, Another thing I was really scared about, but turned out pretty well, was the Elements software you use that really sets up the settings for your Apogee. Now, I've had some experience with the Apogee One, which is an okay interface, but I really wasn't happy with it. For the amount of money you paid for it and what you got out of it, wasn't super crazy. Sound quality was good. Again, the bang for the buck value really wasn't there. And the Apogee One, if I'm not mistaken, uses the Maestro software, which when I was playing around with it, I hated it. The user interface was a little clunky. Now with the Elements software, way more user friendly, and I was able to make some cool customizations. It's, it is a pretty simple to use program. Even if you're just kind of doing the shotgun treatment and just clicking buttons, really it'll probably take five minutes of exploring before you become really familiar with it. Ultimately, I plug my guitar straight into the interface, which goes into my MacBook Pro, running Logic. And I was really pleasantly surprised to hear that my guitar sounded more punchier and offered more clarity than my M Audio. I'm also really happy with the reliability and the stability of the interface. I've had zero latency issues and I've had zero crashing. Mostly I'm concerned with the Elements software it came with. So who is this interface perfect for? Well, if you're currently running a Mac computer via Logic, the Apogee is designed to work perfectly with that. The setup is incredibly easy. If portability is important to you, this interface is perfect. There's no knobs on it, no buttons, no controls, so nothing's gonna get broken off in transport. Uh, again, really small footprints, so you're not gonna lose a lot of desk space or rack space or something like this. The sound quality is pretty tremendous. I can't really think of anything negative to say about the Apogee, minus the small quib with the finding the, the driver. But ultimately, like I said, if you have a solid Mac rig, I think you're going to be really happy with the Apogee products. They use really good components in it. It's a really solid sound card. So you're not going to break the bank, but it's a nice upgrade if you're that bedroom uh, recording musician. Consider the Element 46. I know they also offer two other models depending on what you're looking to do with your recording. If you're re looking to record a full piece band, I believe there's the Element 88, which offers you, I think, eight inputs. And then the Element 26, which offers you two inputs. So food for thought. Hope you had fun watching this video. Quick, to the point, and subscribe. Smush that keyboard if you had fun watching this. So that was my first impression with the Apogee Element 46. I know I kind of omitted a lot of the specs. Again, if you are looking at buying this interface, I bet you a million bucks. You've already been on a bunch of websites and you're already kind of familiar with the specs. However, I will have those links down below just in case you haven't. And also stay tuned shortly, probably tonight, probably tomorrow, Probably by the time you watch this video, I'll already have the second video up, but it's gonna be a playthrough with the interface. It's my trusty ukulele being mic'd, plugged straight into it, no compressors, no monkeying around with uh, the coloring of the sound. So if you're curious with how Element Interface performs, that video will be here very soon. Thank you, cheers.